Good day, folks. I hope you enjoyed my book that I released. It's a free ebook and it basically talks about the Maxwell's Extended Equations. This is a video I decided to make an extension to that. So if you haven't read the book already, I encourage you to, to read the book. I will provide the link and it will give you a deeper understanding of what concepts I'm basing myself on here for you to understand what I'm trying to do. And in the book, I specify Nathan Stubblefield as one of the examples, and this is a very interesting topic of its own which deserves more attention and gives us a very good understanding of how basically they knew about Maxwell's extended equations, him and Tesla at the time, but for some reason uh, couldn't admit to it, whether they were told to shut up or it had to be suppressed. We could just speculate on that. But with that said, here's a picture of um, Nathan Stumblefield in the fields, and uh, he's testing his inductive base system, and we have several schematics basically of his own um, research available. But the issue is with his versions, they're very simplified, and they basically show us the system which includes uh, Oliver Heaviside's revised principles which makes it very simplified. So here in the simplified version you got a mic connecting on one line going to the air battery, the air battery coming out here on the other side of the loop of essentially forming a dead short and talking to the mic created these fields. This is actually a very typical very primitive inductive setup. It's basically used in uh, mining still today. It's a huge loop and as long as you're within the inside with a basic audio amplifier circuit you've got basic communications. Very serious limitations with this kind of setup folks is in the uh, case of the uh, ground loops you have to be inside if it's used for mining. So as soon as you get a little bit outside of the loop parameters because it's a magnetic system and there's no more coupling you can't hear anything. So with this setup here, with, which in the example is a 10 foot receive loop with a short distance, maybe 25 feet away, is what is needed to hear a signal here. Now, this system on its own won't go much more further than 25 feet just on the natural principles of this induction system. But however, it does work and it does describe the basic principles of the magnetic fields and induction. However, for some reason it is incomplete as to what Nathan Stumblefield was up to because it's well documented in the systems that he was getting a lot more than 25 feet. I mean, we were talking about miles or so. They were talking from farm fields to other farm fields. There was something in the system here that he understood, Tesla understood, but for some reason couldn't tell the world. But, taking into a the equation, Maxwell's extended equations, which I talk about deeply in my book, I was able to design a better circuit that actually demonstrates how this system would actually work. So let me explain my logic to how I came up with this circuit which would actually explain how Nathan Stumblefield was able to do what he actually does in a more clear understanding. So in my setup, the primary coil, which is L1 right here, is fed with a low voltage DC source, source which creates a dead short. This is the earth battery right here, so here's your dead short through the mic. What happens is the current passing through the primary coil is modulated by the speaker here, which is in line with the coil, as you can see. And the displacement current is due to the changing magnetic fields, and this creates an alternating magnetic field that's picked up here by the second coil, L2 here. And L2 is inductively coupled to L1 naturally because they act like regular transformers here. And there's a magnetic field system going on here. So what happens is um, the L2 coil is, then comes out of the ground here and into another L3, which is an, another loop, which creates another sort of um, dead short here. And uh, this third loop is in series with the L2, as you can see, and is supported a few feet off the ground as he would be seen in many of his pictures with that loop coming out of the ground a little bit here. This third loop would simply pick up the modulated magnetic field from L2 over here and convert it back into a form of electrical signal. So um, obviously the system works differently from um, the traditional wireless communication systems that uses electromagnetic waves to transmit the information instead of using the RF waves. So the inductive closed circuit radio is basically 
um, how I think this would have worked now. A deeper explanation here. When the current in the primary coil is modulated, it creates a changing magnetic field, which in turn, which in turn induces a current in the secondary coil. This current can then be detected and converted back into an electrical signal by using a transformer kind of setup here and amplified over long distances. While this system may not be as efficient as traditional wireless communication, it was a unique approach that demonstrated the potentials of using magnetic fields to transmit information. The inductive closed circuit radio system remains an important historical innovation and um, even Tesla studied Nathan's work very seriously for his wireless innovations. It is true that Nathan's tumble field system is based on the application of some of Maxwell's extended equations as I'm talking about because I don't see any other ways where this would have worked without taking the extended equations into consideration because like I said earlier such a primitive system under the new Oliver Heaviside as simplified equations just doesn't allow for a system such as he had but with my modifications taking into a consideration Maxwell's extended equation all of a sudden this can work and we have an explanation of how it could what happens is it's true that Stumblefield system is based on the application of some of Maxwell's extended equations and it's specifically the displacement of current and its coupling with the magnetic fields here the concept, unfortunately, is no longer included in the revised version of Maxwell's equation, which I just specified earlier, which is known as the heavy side equations, and they don't account for the displacement current. However, we must remember, folks, that it's important to note that the heavy side equations were developed for simplicity and unify Maxwell's original equations. It was not to invalidate them at all. While the displacement current is no longer included in Heaviside's equation, its effects, folks, are still present and can be accounted for in many other ways, such as I explain here. If we counter the curve factor of Maxwell's extended equations that can account for systems like torsion fields with Nathan's closed radio system, all of a sudden this could work even better now. One possible explanation is that the torsion fields could interact with the magnetic fields generated by the system, either by amplifying or attenuating them. Torsion fields, as you've read in my book, are thought to be able to propagate through solid objects, including the Earth, and their properties are not affected by electromagnetic shielding, which could make the potential medium a very great one for wireless communications, such as he was finding out way back then. In Nathan's system, the use of buried coils and grounding of the primary coil here could have allowed for stronger interaction between the magnetic fields and the earth, which could have facilitating the transmission of signals over long distances, as I talked about here. If torsion fields were present and able to interact with the magnetic fields, they could have contributed to the overall efficiency of the system by enhancing the transmissions of the signals and reducing interference. If the torsion fields were present in stumble field system, they could potentially interact with the changing magnetic fields created by the modulated currents of the primary coil. Um, the torsion fields could distort space-time in a way that could enhance the transmission of the magnetic fields, allowing it to travel further and be picked up by the secondary coil at a much greater distance such as he was doing his, in his early demonstrations here. Maxwell's extended equations were formulated to account for the displacement current, believe it or not, and its coupling with changing magnetic fields. The displacement current is a time-varying electric field that acts like a current and contributes to the formation of electromagnetic waves. In Nathan Stumblefield's inductive closed-circuit radio systems, the displacement current plays a significant role in the transmission of information through the changing magnetic fields, which, of course, are not accounted for in today's new revised Oliver Heaviside equations. However, there are other phenomena beyond traditional electromagnetic fields that could be accounted for with the use of Maxwell's extended equations. One such example, as I've stated already, is the torsion fields, which are a type of field that are not accounted for in the traditional electromagnetism. Torsion fields are thought to be a spin-based field that can produce an effect on physical systems, such as changing the rate of chemical reactions or modifying the properties of materials. 
if torsion fields were to exist, it is possible that their effects could be accounted for the mathematical framework of Maxwell's extended equations. Specifically, folks, through the curve factor. The curve factor is a modification of Maxwell's equation that accounts for the curvature of space-time that could potentially allow for the inclusion of torsion fields. So basically, with that said, in the deep explanation, um, this is how the modified circuit would work, and it's based on the displacement current and the magnetic fields and the curve factor and torsion fields and the curve factor relating to space-time here and the Earth's torsion fields reactions. That's, of course, taking Maxwell's extended equations into considerations. Now, my apologies if I had to read notes, but the technical of this was pretty intense, and I didn't want to make any mistakes. I've been having a lot of trolls lately, and they pick on me for saying reactants instead of resistance. So I really didn't want to make any mistakes this time. So with that said, I believe that I um, articulated my point, and that uh, you folks will understand what I mean, and um, Maxwell's extended equations, you should really take them into consideration today. They could be used for all kinds of potential applications, like I said in my book, powering systems, communication systems, potentially new ones that we don't even know of, and this guy here in Tesla was onto it, and for some reason, everything had to get suppressed. So, I hope you enjoy and let me know what you think and have yourselves all a great day, folks.